Good morning. Welcome to this service of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. We are very pleased to have you here today with us in the chapel or live online or viewing this service uh, in a recording format later. Please take note of our butterflies for hope. Isn't it beautiful? Thank you, Kathy, for arranging that this morning too. Where are you, Kathy? Well done. Um, it gets more beautiful every week as more butterflies are added to it. And many thanks to those who have supported our Butterflies for Hope fundraiser. You can still add your butterfly to the tree today. And next week will be your final opportunity before we dedicate it on May 14th. So for additional information, please contact the church office. The Lifelong Learning Team is pleased to announce that they have uh, the date finalized for the second se session in the speaker series. It will now be at 7.30 p.m. I've got a.m. written here, but I'm sure it's in the evening <laughs> on May 10th uh, at Collier Street United Church. Scott McCriddle, McCrindle will speak on how I killed the electric car in Barrie, Ontario. Scott McCrindle is a faculty researcher at Georgian College Research and Innovation and a recent graduate from the master's program in environmental practice at Royal Roads University. We all know that life can get a little overwhelming and a care note can provide just the right words of encouragement, strength, guidance, and comfort. Um, of note this week, a booklet of prayers for all your cares. This guide is intended to show children that God is someone we can share our feeling, every feeling with, and one that we can go to in our own simple words. It covers a wide range of important children's themes, from praying about one's anger or sadness to praying about being afraid or bored. The booklets are in the foyer on a table just outside. Feel free to take a look. And talk about just in time, just in time for the gardening season. Shane Mays has linked this up uh, into the Bradford Greenhouses Garden Gallery fundraising program. Um, already underway and lasting until mid-October, the program allows customers to support a charity or organization, including us. So when you shop there, just tell the cashier before they're starting to ring in your plants and garden goods, I'm helping St. Andrew's Berry. Repeat after me. I'm helping St. Andrew's Berry. Thank you. <laughs> and before we go to any more announcements, Murray, don't you have an announcement? Okay. Brief announcement. Go Leafs, go. <laughs> For those of you on YouTube who couldn't hear, Murray just had to add that Go Leafs Go. <laughs> the Trinity Little Food Pantry always needs your support. So do the Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> Non-perishable food items may be left at the back of the chapel on Sundays or in the office at Collier United between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. weekdays. Is she here today? Oh, then we, oh. Well, we still want to wish a special birthday to Peggy Miller as she turns 80 this week. And finally, Friday mornings between tw uh, 10 and 12 noon, please join us for coffee and fellowship at Collier Street United Church. Everyone is welcome to join in this time of fellowship. And now, let us enjoy our prelude as we prepare for worship.
Good morning. Good morning. I also like to make an announcement. Today is Connie and Kent's 63rd anniversary. So, mm -hmm. So please turn to your neighbor, and if you'd like, I'll give you one second to share if you're a big Leafs fan, if, if, if you are, and just share some few of the highlights. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, look at them go. Oh, my. Look at them. They needed, they needed this. Oh. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's almost like it's... Yeah. It's, yeah. In their hearts, they just needed to just let, let it out of it. One more second. Oh, sure. No, no, you. Oh, you. You can stand, and then I'll just. That's a cue. a good chance. Yes, go Leafs, go, right? That's <laughs> All right. Let us now come together for the call to worship. <clears throat> Can you hear the voice of God? We hear God calling us by name. Are you troubled or distressed? We come here to find a place to rest for a while. Come and find a guide who knows these lands. We come to praise our shepherding God, whose pathways and doors lead to life. Let us join our voices singing our opening hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. Please stand. <clears throat>
was beautiful. Please be seated. Let us now come together for the prayer of adoration and confession, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God of love, we come trusting that your love has the power to defeat evil in the world. Jesus shows us that your love defeats even the power of death. You are with us through the darkest valleys so that we are not afraid. We worship you with glad hearts, praising you in the name of our risen Lord, praying with the breath of your spirit in us. God of love, you know how easy it is for us to stray. We wander off so easily. Forgive us, we pray. Heal our brokenness and our fears. Remind us again that you lead us in gentle path and by quiet waters. When the path are stony and the ways tumultuous, help us to remember your protection and your care. Help us to extend that same love and care to others. We offer these prayers and our unspoken concerns to you in the name of the risen Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The good news is that Christ calls to new life and enables us to begin again and again and again and again. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As Jesus healed the afflicted and restored those who have died, he also forgives our sins and gives us new life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us now sing our next hymn, He is Lord. We'll be singing two times. Please stand. <laughs> seated. So today we will be skipping over children's time as Mia has uh, an engagement today and we reached out to the young families and I guess considering the weather's not that sunny out but uh, they're busy so <laughs> we'll skip children's time. So now I call up David to lead us in our scripture readings. Today's scripture reading from the Old Testament is Psalm 23, the Divine Shepherd. Please join me in repeating this in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. 
my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Today's New Testament reading comes from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. That's John chapter 10, 1 to 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May God bless to our understanding this reading of his holy word. And at this time, I invite Anne, our music director, to say a few words. Well, there's a few things. You'll notice that the, uh, the gathering song was changed. I planned that when I didn't know the forecast. It was called Unclouded Day. And so I changed it to It's Beginning to Rain. <laughs> And my apologies for that musical interlude that you had while you were greeting each other. Anyways, music is a fair and glorious gift of God. And that's a quote from Martin Luther. One definition of a choir is a body of singers with more than one voice per part. The St. Andrew's Choir started up again in November of last year after being away for several years due to COVID. It has been a struggle and as you have probably noticed, our numbers are dwindling. Due to several concerns, the choir has decided to take an indefinite break until more people want to join the choir again. I make this announcement today, as today will be our last performance during our Sunday services. We will be looking for volunteers to sing and, or play uh, solos, duets, trios, quartets, etc., to fill in for our music for Sunday services. I understand we have a huge talent just sitting out there right now. And uh, maybe you might be able to make some time to offer a Sunday some of your musical services. If you would like to sign up to help out this way, please contact me via email, phone, text, and I will be very glad to sign you up in the schedule. Also, I put on the website um, a week or so ago, if you have a special song or hymn that you'd like played, either sometime during the, the service, like uh, the gathering, the prelude, or the dismissal, if you have a song that you really want, uh, just let me know and I will do my best to play it for you in the next coming months. Thank you.
Thank you, choir. Let us pray. God of green pastures and still waters, quiet our hearts and minds as we listen to today's message on the Good Shepherd. By your spirit, deepen our understanding so that we come to know you more fully and follow your word more faithfully. Amen. Before we dwell into the parable of the Good Shepherd, we first need to understand why Jesus told this parable and for us to understand what the sheepfold may have looked like during the time of Jesus. Jesus told this parable for the Pharisees, the religious teachers, to open their spiritual eyes as they refused to believe that Jesus was truly sent from God. When the formerly blind man testified that Jesus had healed him, the Pharisees did not believe in the truth. Instead, they threw him out from worshiping in the synagogue. Jesus tells this parable for the leaders to truly open their eyes, for they are the ones who are spiritually blind. Jesus refers to them as a thief and abandoned because they climb in another way. They do not enter the sheepfold by the gate. In other words, the Pharisees described in chapter 9 are the false shepherds compared with Jesus, the true shepherd. For us to clearly understand what Jesus is saying, we need to know what a sheepfold looked like. The sheepfold is a rock wall enclosure of loosely stacked stones. The enclosure also contained the door of the sheepfold, an opening for the sheep to come in and go out. Jesus emphasizes the importance of the one who enters by the gate is in fact the shepherd, the good shepherd of the sheep. It is interesting to note that the, our prophet, the prophet Ezekiel denounced the shepherds for they were the false shepherds Israel's spiritual and political leaders who only took care of themselves. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 3 to 5 points out how selfish these shepherds were. It reads, you eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought them back, brought the strays back, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. In our world today, we are constantly fed with so much information that it almost feels like we are bombarded with many voices that want our attention, commitment, and loyalty. As Jesus says, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and abandoned, for they come to steal, kill, and destroy. David C., Carabindian, in his book titled Seven Different Kinds of Voices, reveals that there is the voice of God, voice of Satan, voice of the world, voice of flesh, voice of soul, voice of dead, and voice of religion, like the Pharisee's voice that opposed Jesus. Friends, the key is to follow Jesus, the good shepherd. We follow him because he came, that we may have life and have it abundantly. The blind man who has been healed and given sight says in John chapter 9, verse 39, I believe, Lord. 
The man has received sight and have eternal life as abundant life constitutes not necessarily only worldly riches or material goods, but also focusing on eternal life. Let us now turn to our attention to verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hears his voice. The sheep recognizes the shepherd's voice because the sheep experiences that when they follow the good shepherd, they know that they are safe with him. Psalm 23 as we read earlier, encapsulates the reason to follow not just any shepherd, but the good shepherd. In order to follow the good shepherd, we need to recognize the shepherd's voice. The sheep can recognize his voice because they spend long hours with the shepherd. He calls his own, by, his own sheep by name and leads them out. Do you see the intimate relationship they have formed? The shepherd takes a personal interest with each one of the sheep, getting to know their individual traits. Take, for example, if a particular sheep had a strong left leg, the shepherd would then call out, hey, lefty, perhaps as his name. For the shepherd to call them by name, you see, he needs to spend time with each of them. Likewise, for us as well, we need to spend time reading the word of God so that we can recognize his voice clearly. And how are we able to do that more often? We all know how convenient and dependent, and dependent we have become with our cell phones, yes? Our cell phones can be at times a distraction, spending, spending endless hours checking text messages or surfing on the web, but it can also be a handy device to hear the word of God. My husband David has downloaded a Bible app. Every time he opens his phone, a Bible verse pops up, encouraging him well, actually, he has no choice. He has to read the script. <laughs> to read a scripture. No, he has to. Every time he swipes the screen, and once he does that, then the phone opens or it's able to work. How convenient is that? Some of you, or most of you, Sunday mornings, you see David looking down on his phone. No, it's not that he checks his email or he's ignoring you folks. Because of the Bible app, he is reading God's words. He is focusing on God's words. He also has the option to read it in Korean if he wants. How convenient. Modern technology. We need to use it to our advantage to praise God. For us to be able to enter the sheepfold, we need to recognize the shepherd's voice. First, by reading the Bible, then praying to God and obeying God's commandment to worship him and loving our neighbors. We don't follow just any shepherd. No, not just any voice, but we follow the good shepherd. We recognize the voice of Jesus as verse 4 assures us of God's promises. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. The good shepherd goes ahead of us. He leads us. It is interesting to note, according to biblical commentators, the shepherd leading the sheep is an Eastern method of shepherding. Whereas in the West, the shepherds tend to drive the sheep, chasing them along with the sheepdog nipping at their heels. The shepherd leading the sheep is not simply to point the way, but also to make sure that the way is steady and safe. What a beautiful picture of Jesus and us following him. We can see this in Psalm 23, as biblical scholar Jeff Paschal, he puts it. The psalmist says, this God is our shepherd 
who grants our needs, causes us to rest and be restored, leads us in the right way of living, protects us from evil, honors and blesses us, and never stops pursuing with goodness and kindness. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10 to 11, also depicts God as the good shepherd. The sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. Most importantly, we follow the good shepherd because, as Jesus says in verse 7, I am the gate for the sheep. As mentioned earlier, a sheepfold at that time was constructed with only one opening. This made it easier to prevent sheep from wandering out, wild animals from coming in, and controlling who had access to the sheep. This opening was guarded by a doorkeeper. Since the fold needed clothes and constant guarding, the doorkeeper would typically lay across the opening to rest or sleep. In that way, the gatekeeper was literally became the gate or the door of the sheep pen. Like the doorkeeper laid across the opening, Jesus laid down his life for us so that we are redeemed and given eternal life. We do not need to follow the false shepherds or the selfish shepherds as mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. For when we do follow them, we will not have life abundant, but we become food for the wild animals. Jesus says in verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Molly Marshall shares in Feasting of the Word Commentary that abundant life might also include a purposeful vocation that serves the common good, participation in a general ecclesial community, delight in sustaining relationships, and a sense of security in Christ no matter what comes. I concur with Molly. When we follow the Good Shepherd, our lives reflect our gratitude for everything he has done for us and provided for us. We desire to follow in his ways, in our vocation as God has called each of us to do. We desire to work with others by volunteering our times, our resources to further God's kingdom here in our community. We desire to come to worship and praise his name. We desire to reconcile with whom we have hurt or distanced ourselves. We desire to put our complete trust in the Good Shepherd, even when we are faced with challenges. We know that the Good Shepherd is with us as we walk through the darkest valley. He protects us. Yes, he protects us with his rod and staff. Let us rejoice with the psalmist once again as we follow the good shepherd saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. We are fortunate to watch a, a video clip that I prepared. Unfortunately, the sound is not working, so I will kind of ab lib or walk us through. It's quite straightforward. It's a video clip of a shepherd. Do sheep really recognize or follow the shepherd's voice? Raise your hand. Do you think the sheep recognize the shepherd? Oh, okay, yes. So we'll watch a, a cute video of a few students coming up and calling out, la la la, calling out sheep, but right? No surprise, they don't come forward. And later on, the shepherd calls, calls a special calling, and you'll see a wonderful abundance of sheep just kind of coming forward to the shepherd. That's our video clip. Please enjoy. There you go. Mm -hmm. So calling them. Hey, Lefty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Minding their own business. <laughs> no 
no luck. <laughs> now the farmer. Their heads are up. <laughs> They know his voice, they recognize. Let us now sing our appropriate hymn, Savior, like a shepherd lead us. Please stand. <clears throat> Be seated. Let us now come together for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, shepherd of our lives, we are thankful for this day for all you provide to sustain us. You call our weary souls to rest when the world seems busy. You bless us with the promise of new life as pastures around us turn green, announcing another spring. You gather us around the tables of friend friendship to draw strength from one another. Thank you for signs of your goodness and mercy. We can treasure each day. Loving and listening God, shepherd of the world, we bring you our prayers for others, friends and enemies, neighbors and strangers alike. We pray for people who are struggling with illness, loneliness, grief, or sadness. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. 
We pray for people in countries and communities where it is not safe to live out their faith or express their views openly. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. We pray for victims of discrimination and acts of hatred and those who fear violence day by day. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. We pray for advocates for justice who live under constant threat for telling the truth. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. We pray for churches, local organizations, and businesses that face difficulties, reorganizing and the pressure of economic challenges. Walk with them through dark days and steep valleys. We pray for our families, friends, and for ourselves as well, as those in the news whose situations tug at our hearts. Walk with us all through dark days and steep valleys. We offer these prayers and our unspoken concerns to you in the name of the risen Lord, our good shepherd. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The words of the psalm celebrates God's overflowing goodness and mercy in our lives. We offer God our gifts to God's goodness and mercy. will keep flowing into the world God made. Please now stand for the doxology. <clears throat> Let us pray. God, with a tender heart, we thank you for the care you offer to us as our good shepherd. Bless the gifts we offer so they will spread your abundant love to lives in need of caring. Bless our lives so that we may care for the world as we follow Jesus day by day. Amen. Let us join our voices singing our closing hymn, Come, Let Us Sing. <clears throat>
friends, go in peace, sure that the good shepherd walks beside you. May God lead you to places of rest and renewal. May Christ give you courage on the journey. May the Holy Spirit fill your hearts with joy and generosity. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. be seated. <clears throat> 